A very good day, my dear postgraduate students. Nice having a class recorded for you after a long lull. Perhaps vacations are needed for both students and teachers. I now welcome you people to an important topic, namely the reticulant state. As postgraduates, we must be very much aware of what our portions for the examination will be. And this will be forming a very important practical exercise. Now that the postgraduate seats in each center is being increased, there is a likely chance of each one of us being given a special state, maybe by choice or by allocation. Hence, we should be prepared with it. And we must be remembering that we are not technicians who are constantly handling them. The important sources of reference for all my technical topics will be these three, Lynch, Bancroft, and Cully. I would advise you people to kindly fall back on them if at all you have got any iota of them. Now, there are a few people who have contributed a lot. This is Gordon and Sweet. And it was introduced in the year 1936. I am not going to go into the intricacies of this. This is for you people to read or have it clarified from your technicians. But then, Please do remember this particular saying. If you are not part of the solution, you are part of the precipitate. So, one word that we should remember in this reticulant stain shall be precipitate. In fact, that gives a very fine line between any two technicians and it will score one over the other. So these are the steps in Gordon and Sweet's method. We shall be repeatedly revisiting them. My idea is just to show how long and laborious a procedure it is. Look at the number of steps. And finally, the reticular fibers are black. Probably this is what happened in our black and white photography those days with the silver. Now, what am I seeing on the screen? There is, of course, a lesion, and it is composed of a number of cells in nests. I say that because still I am able to make out the round nuclei thanks to the counter stain that has been used. Also, I find that there is a relatively clear cytoplasm because no stain has been applied to it. Fine. So this is a carcinoma. And we would have read in our undergraduate years that carcinoma has got less of connective tissue, sarcoma has got more of connective tissue. So the rule that we should remember is sarcoma, reticulant fibers surround each cell. Whereas in a carcinoma, the reticulant fibers surround groups of cells. And rule number two, Remember rule number one. So there is always only one rule that we shall follow. And that is sarcoma and carcinoma. Let us have it in one corner of our mind. And this is the Gordon and Sweet's reticulant stain for differentiating the carcinoma from a sarcoma. Now, in our body, we have got different types of tissues. Some, such as the alveoli and the blood vessels are compliant, they are elastic, they have a tendency to recoil, while others cannot bend also. The bone is a classical example. Still others have got a low degree of compliance. The tendon, for example, it can be stretched to some extent. 
And we must also remember that collagen and elastic fibers are all being constantly remodeled. And with aging, we'll be finding the change in. So this is an interesting finding that I picked up with relation to the connective tissues. And the golden rule that I always follow is a businessman or a teacher should always place himself in the position of the customer. And you are my customer and I should always place myself in your shoes so that I can present my class better. A nice saying by this person. With this, I go to the reticulin sting. Always, I used to say that, think of the subheadings, the subheadings will take us to the hands. So, these are the list of headings, you people shall go to it. Now, what I would like us to appreciate will be, I am finding some strands of cells, rather anastomosing cords of cells, and they are being bordered by the black stain or the reticulin. So this is the normal reticulin framework that we find in a tissue. You might be given a lymph node or a liver for a slide to be stained. And see this nice framework that is there within our tissues. Going to the history behind it, always we find that any of these procedures have been modified, remodified, invented, innovated a number of times. And these are the people behind. I couldn't get much of the details of some. Cook in 1974 probably was a person who made the medical application in the reticulin stain. Lily, as usual, he has done a lot of work. In the PAS also, you have got a Lily's modification. The silver impregnation was done by this person, Belchowski, in the nerve fibers. And Wellington was a person. Nowadays, we are being harassed by the MCA and the NMC for the publication of the papers and so on. But then, long back in 1965, this person had narrated the explosive hazards of the ammoniacal silver solutions. Now, what are the steps that are to be involved. These are the important ones that we should have in mind. I'll tell you why. Pre-oxidation with KMnO4, potassium permanganate, sensitizing by iron alum, impregnation with ammoniacal silver solution, toning with gold chloride, fixing in sodium thiosulfate, and finally a counter staining with any of the ones that have been mentioned. Please do remember these things. That is why I given a shade of these we shall be remembering because they shall be asked for in the exam. And this is the history behind the reticulum. This is what I had been mentioning. Way back in 1965, this person has narrated the explosive nature of the ammoniacal silver solution and the way to combat them not to prepare them in large quantities and store them. And this is another person, Belshowski, who has done the staining. Look at the very fine reticular fibers in the neural tissue. And if you take more of the anatomy slides rather than the pathology slides, you will be finding this gold chloride adorning them. And this is incidentally the basket cells that are found in the cerebellum. And it is the own work of nephron, which is an element of Wikipedia, not mine. I had shown you a framework, but then, now, for courtesy's sake, we all know that the liver has got three zones. This is the central vein, then around the central vein is zone three, then Around the portal triad is zone 1 and in between you have got the zone 2. This is important. And what we are seeing is a very delicate framework of 
thin black lines by the reticulum. Also, you will be finding a faint pink or a green or an alcyon blue background, which is a counter stain. This we shall be remembering for the reasons that are to come. Coming to the structure of the reticulum, whenever we talk about the connective tissue, there are three things. One is collagen, two is elastin, and three is reticulin. The reticulin is not just lines as we are thinking. Look at this, they are plump cells and they have got a nuclei also and they have got delicate, never-ending arms which are touching each other and forming a delicate but then a strong framework. The same has been reflected in a picture by Alan Lee. I always go to this which is a wonderful source of ancient pictures. And look at this one. This again is perhaps more of a histology. That is what we say. The reference is also given over here. And these are the bundles of collagen fibers. And I'm able to see the spindle-shaped fibroblast. So which means probably the fibroblast mature and then are converted to collagen as a development. And in this picture, I'm finding that there are very delicate elastic fibers over here. And then there are the collagen bundles also. This is given only for the sake of completion and comparison, not to be read. The reference is also given. So what are the fibers? What is collagen? What is elastin? What is reticular fiber? And what are the natures of these? Incidentally, I am dealing with the reticulin stain, which is a special stain for the exam. There are the other stains such as Van Giesen, which might also be given, and the meson strikeworm, which is routinely being used. We shall come to them at a later date. So this again is a completion of the entire list. So this is the nature of it. Reticulin is a fibrillary extracellular scaffolding or bordering of all tissues. It holds the parenchymal cells as well as the special cells and the blood vessels. They are delicate and they stain black on impregnation with silk. And if it is unstained, it, when it is done with Van Giesen, it takes up a pink color, which is not very specific. That is why the reticulin stain. Collagen, on the contrary, is doubly refractile and you find it is found in bundles formed from procollagen, which in turn can develop from a fibroblast. And this is again another chemical nature of it. We shall go on to the next one. So this is what we are finding in a lymph node. It is of course an electron microscopy, a scanning electron microscope. Incidentally, this is also a question for us we find that there is a beautiful framework that has been formed and it is this little containing all the parenchymal cells, holding them in position. And look at the collagen bundles over here and then delicate interlacing elastic fibers and the fibroblasts. Repetition is the mother of knowledge. So I would like you people to kindly recollect the framework, the counter stain, and the normal anatomy of the liver. And these are all the important references. We people can go to it. There are some pundits who ask me doubts at the end of the class, and then for them, this can be the reply. Whenever you are asked a stain, you are supposed to remember the modifications. Two things we shall be remembering. One is Gordon and Sweets. Second one is Gomeris, Methinamine, Silk. These two are the modifications of the reticulin stain, which we shall and will remember and answer in the exam. A role model should be like a light at the end of the tunnel, guiding you when you are lost. And these people are all really role models for us. This particular background, I have given a specific color so that they are being highlighted. It is important. 
again i am repeating what are all the components and what the function is i would like you people to kindly by heart this so that the important components will be knowing and why it is being used definitely senior examiners will ask us what is the purpose of this so what are the steps in this so i think this is more reasonable for us to buy heart. and this also i given in a specific background because this is the standard operating procedure or a slight modification that is being followed in most of the institutes so these are the preparations of the reagents potassium permanganate oxalic acid ferric alum and four is supposed to be a little large five is formalin six is gold chloride sodium thiosulfate and this will be the procedure by which we do it i would like you people to kindly remember this and read up again the same thing repetition is the mother of knowledge end time i am repeating the same thing and look at the meaningful diagram that i have picked up so here there is an oxidation with potassium permanganate this is given here and there is a reticulin which is being acted upon at a basic ph the silver salts are being converted to metallic silver similarly the gold chloride it acts as a permanent reacting agent so that the metallic silver gets precipitated sodium thiosulfate on the contrary removes the unwanted or the unreactive silver so beautifully this has been brought up i don't think that can be a better method by which i can learn the reticulin stain now what are we seeing on the screen i am seeing a cortex and a medulla and there are the cords of the parenchymal cells in groups which are being surrounded by a reticulin framework this is the adrenal so the use of it you people can mention in the applications the different histological zones i am not going to go into courtesy for the picture is wikipedia again and this is a cirrhosis of the lip so look at this one there is a regeneration of the hepatic parenchyma of varying sizes no central vein which we call as effacement of architecture and connecting the central vein to the portal triad or the portal triad to the portal triad or going in between the parenchyma i could see the delicate reticulin fibers over here so this is the importance of the reticulin stain it can take up either a pinkish brown color or a black color and this is the source of the reference for this particular picture this is another important picture these all come under the applications of the reticulin stain so this is a blood vessel around which i am able to see the framework of the reticulin fibers and this incidentally happen to be atypical lymphoid cells or a lymphoma later on even these can be destroyed and you get a diffuse lymphoma that is there and this is the reference for this particular picture a wonderful usage of the reticulin fiber it can be important for example in the breast also if there is going to be a leukemic infiltrate or a lymphoma it can be very well mistaken for a lobular carcinoma yet another use over here this of course we can make out there is a verroque body over here there is a parasitic arrangement of the nuclei but what am i trying to tell you people always in a schwannoma there is a cellular and a acellular area the cellular area is what we are seeing on either side and there will be a relatively acellular area where there is a sparse amount of lymphocyte like cells which are being dispersed so this is a verroque body and look at the excellent reticulin framework that has been brought about by this stain why is it being done and look at this picture over here sometimes there can be an astrocytoma an astrocytoma can be having this kind of a picture and it will be difficult for us to make a diagnosis whether it is an astrocytoma or a neuroma neurilemoma both of which can occur in the brain and this incidentally brings out the framework the diagnosis of schwannoma is 
get another application. What am I seeing over here? Maybe around the region of the cella tersica, I'm finding a nodule. You people already know the diagnosis. And this is what we see. I'm finding uniform cells arranged in an organoid pattern. Any endocrine tumor will be having an organoid pattern. But then the problem is there in this, which we shall be seeing. So here I'm finding the reticulant fibers which are surrounding large nests of cells. There is a sparsity of the fibers and an increase in the parenchymal component. So what is the diagnosis? It happens to be a pituitary adenoma. This is extremely important. Again, a wonderful reference is given, though it is way back. Now, this can be the normal pituitary wherein there is an abundant reticulant framework and there is a lesser amount of the parenchyma in smallness. But as there is a hyperplasia, you find that the nests keep growing in size and the reticulant fibers are being pushed aside. Finally, if it is going to be a neoplastic transformation, you find the paucity of the reticulant fibers and the abundance of the parenchyma. Look at the difference between A, B and C. You people will be knowing what is normal, what is a hyperplasia and what is an adenoma or even a carcinoma. So, look at this particular sequence of pictures over here. In one, I am finding a very closely knit framework of the reticulant fibers and the pale parenchyma within them. In the second one, I find that the parenchyma is occupying a larger space. The reticulant fibers are being pushed aside. Whereas in the last one, there is a relative scarcity of the reticulant fibers. So this is a normal pituitary, this is a hyperplasia, and this is a case of an adenoma. Sometimes when there is a total break, we can indeed suspect a carcinoma. So this happened to be one of our interesting work, and we had made a diagnosis of a hyperplasia, which was confirmed at NIMHANS. Another application, these lesions, probably they'll be having a different nomenclature now, but then we shall remember here for the simplicity sake. Hemangiopericytoma, a tumor formed out of the pericytes. So this is a blood vessel. And then I find that there is a proliferation of the cells outside the blood vessel, the hemangiopericytoma, wherein you find that the reticulant fibers will be surrounding each and every individual cell. Whereas an endothelioma growing out of the endothelial cells, probably a factorate related antigen will confirm the diagnosis, in which I am finding large nests of cells and lesser amount of this reticulant fibers. An important method by which we can distinguish between the two vascular tumors. Get another one. Put in a needle, you get a dry tap. The diagnosis is myelofibrosis. But what are we going to see? I find that there is an increase in the fibrous tissue. Try putting a needle through cotton. You people cannot penetrate it that easily. And that is exactly what happens in the case of myelofibrosis. So there is increased amount of this reticulant fibers, then scarce amount of this hematopoietic cells. And look at the framework over here, a myelofibrosis. There is a grading of the reticulant in the myelofibrosis. You people can go through this for an academic interest. Also, there are some limitations in the grading. And sometimes it can be positive for myelodysplastic syndromes. And it can be used for the diagnosis of metastasis also. So these are the few uses of the reticulin in the case of myelofibrosis. So this is what I had mentioned earlier. You people will be thorough with it now. But see what has happened. Now, what is cirrhosis basically? There is going to be the degeneration of the hepatic parenchyma. There is an ingrowth of the reticulant fibers. There is a collapse of the reticulant framework itself. And then I'm finding this bundle so here. That is what? And on either side. And the liver has got a tendency to grow and grow and grow. You get the nodularity of the liver in cirrhosis. So this is the procedure. I would like you people to kindly go through it.
time points. And this is a Gomery's modification of the methanum density. What are the applications? I have already shown you. One, it can be for the normal architecture of the liver, a diagnosis of cirrhosis, to differentiate between a carcinoma and a sarcoma. Also, epithelial and non-epithelial lesions. Early invasions you people can make out. Hemangioendothelium and hemangiopericytoma. Periductal lymphoma. Also this, a pituitary, a normal, hyperplasia and an adenoma. Myelofibrosis. Remember this friend, friend of us, Tryptococcus neophobus. It is a negative stain. And schwannoma versus astrocytoma. Always in special stains, have a list of the applications with you. By heart, I have given you a dozen. Even if you people can reproduce five in the examination of the viva, you are an excellent student. So this is a nodular regeneration. Look at this over here. It is getting regenerated and it is being pushed. This incidentally is one of the important reason advanced question which I have covered. So this is a hyperplasia and this is a normal liver for comparison. Also, there is a reticulum loss in the case of a hepatocellular carcinoma. So as just like a corollary to the pituitary tumor, you find that there is an overgrowth of the neoplastic cells, very little framework, and this is given here for comparison, the normal liver. What are the disadvantages of the reticulum stain then? One, we will remember that it is explosive. Therefore, even I got it assured from my technician that only small amounts of these are being produced. Otherwise, they get reduced, they can get precipitated, and they produce very bad staining. They will have to be stored in dark containers. Black crystals can be formed. It requires a very scrupulous technique. Obviously, 17, 18 steps is not that easy. And when it is being stored in flask coated with metallic silver, which must not be done, that is why the double X over here, it can lead to violent explosions, which has happened. And go back to the history, I have given that earlier. So, epilogue means at the end of it. So, it can be so very intricate as this. But then, in due time, what people have done is, it requires a large volume of the staining solutions. It is costly, it is time consuming, and it is difficult to achieve the results. These are all some disadvantages. Therefore, they have gone into the various modifications which the companies are now marketing. I would like you people to kindly be familiar with these. So what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? What is the stain? What is the principle? What are the steps of it? And what will be the various disadvantages? Finally, the results you achieve will be in direct proportion to the effort you apply. I hope the reticulant string and the class of mine will stand up to this standard. Thank you.